Man. My shoulders are sore. This is why you don't work out. No. This is why you do work out. Uh, no. <laughs> just no. Okay. Well, I've been proven wrong. <laughs> I'm just pussy. And yeah, but... I'm super weak, and that's, that's part of the problem. It's because I'm like, yeah, I could totally do this. And then I get to the gym, and I'm like, oh, no, I can't. Oh, my God. This 15 pounds is really a bitch. <laughs> now I just want a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stopping at Taco Bell on the way home. <laughs> Isn't that the point of going to the gym? Yes. <laughs> dude. I never did that as a kid. Dude, the uh, the gym over in Squim was like the worst before it closed because it literally, the lobby was right by the Chinese food restaurant. Oh. And so you'd come out into the lobby and just smell the Chinese food and you're just like. I could get a couple of egg rolls. <laughs> I could go for a couple of egg rolls. Egg rolls and some dumplings? Yeah, I could do this. <laughs> I did just work out for 20 minutes. <laughs> what sounds good? Orange chicken. <laughs> it does. Oh, you know that chow mein's just calling me. It was a trap, I swear to God. I think they worked together. <laughs> <laughs> they planned it out before they put their buildings up. Like, all right, listen. You've been here forever, Chinese restaurant. I'm putting in a gym <laughs> right across the street <laughs> the chinese food place should have had like flyers for the gym too so that you know you gorge yourself on chinese food and then as you're paying you feel guilty and you're like you're right i should join the gym <laughs> <laughs> you spend more than 40 dollars on chinese food you get five dollars off that month <laughs> at the gym <sighs> once a month that's it we can't do more than once a month though <laughs> you get one discount a month that's it Good times. Good <laughs> times. Ah, I'm glad I don't live in Squim. <laughs> right? I mean, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, hey, welcome to another nightmare, everybody. Wel- welcome. I'm Danny. I'm Brian. And yeah, good times. Definitely good times. Welcome to our sixth episode. Bum, bum, bum. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> So what's this one about? What are we doing? What are we talking about? What's today's agenda? Stuff. Good. Ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> there was no stuff. <laughs> Where I was s- the stuff? I said stuff and things. I guess that counts. You did not say things. I just did, so ha, ha, ha. I proved you wrong. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I'm going to laugh like that forever. <laughs> Every time I remember, it's going to happen. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Nothing. <laughs> Everything. Why? Why? It's just, why? What? I don't know. I don't know. How do you know I said that? I watched your mouth move. You don't know anything. Rude. <laughs> It's an insult and a half. I just don't know what we're talking about today. <laughs> well, considering that this Friday is Friday the 13th, I thought I we thought would talk was, about it. I thought it was a birthday. <laughs> no. Shh. When's my dad's birthday? <laughs> Bro, I don't know. I think it's on the 13th. <laughs> Chad, happy birthday. Uh, I'll text you soon. <laughs> Crap, I forgot your dad was in November. Oh, man. Uh, I also forgot Devin's. He's already passed. I know. He's already passed. It's okay. Sorry, Devin. I'm really bad with birthdays. Happy so everybody birthday. that I know and love, I'm sorry I always forget your birthday. I'm bad at it. But anyways, I thought we would talk about Friday the 13th and oh, yeah. like why that's like a thing. Why everybody's so like... Ooky spooky about why they don't put 13th floors in some big towers or hotels or something. They always go 12, 14. Which, I mean, makes is ridiculous. The 14th floor, the 13th exactly. floor. So it's just Nolan Floyd. No, it's 14. We don't have a 13th. It's different just because we didn't put the number there. That's no, what it's it, the same. That's what it was like in Hawaii when I went there and into uh, the one island. Oh, shit. Oahu? I believe, yeah, or yeah, because it is. Is it 
Well, I went to Kauai. I remember that one because it was awesome. And then I think I went to Oahu because that's where Honolulu is, right? Mm -hmm. Then, yes, I went to Oahu. And they skipped the 13th floor? Yeah, they skipped the 13th floor because we were... We were like on the fifth or seventh floor. And, yeah, on, on all the elevators it was... 12, 14, 15, 16. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So I don't can... recall ever actually seeing that in a building. But I mean, really, I haven't been into a lot of tall buildings. I, th I think the tallest building was like the Wells Fargo building in Salt Lake City because that yeah. went up to like 24 floors plus the roof. Oh, dang. But I think it had a 13th floor. Well, I'm sure it's just between some like people that actually are superstitious well i know it's a lot of older buildings and it's more prominent on like the west coast or sorry the east coast i was gonna say i was like really because <laughs> they're here? they're like the older skyscrapers and yeah. stuff but but yeah so i thought we would talk about the superstition of friday the 13th like why everybody fears the number 13 and why everybody's like who no, friday the 13th we're all going to die Ooh. although this year it may be true hey don't i'm just kidding we're not all going to die. It's just going to be a fiery pit of destruction. Thanks. That's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, as the whole year of 2020 has been. <laughs> fiery like pit fire of destruction. Pit of poop. My dark father has been drinking. Oh my, <laughs> my dark father. <laughs> okay. Don't, you don't like it when I bring up my dark father? No, he's okay. <laughs> he's all right. I You're mean, just jealous. We don't have the best relationship. Me not believing him in one. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of my face, yelling at me, and I'm like, I can't see you. <laughs> okay, John Cena. Can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck you call me John Cena for? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to. It was too good. Uh, um, so anyways... Superstition is defined as a belief or notion not based on reason or knowledge in or of the ominous significance of a particular thing, circumstance, occurrence, proceeding, or the like. It is also defined as a belief or practice resulting from ignorance, fear of the unknown, trust in magic or chance, or a false conception of causation. It often arises from ignorance, a misunderstanding of science or causality, a belief in fate or magic, or fear of that which is unknown. It is commonly applied to beliefs and practices surrounding luck, prophecy, and certain spiritual beings. Well, howdy do. So, yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. Yes. That's awesome. That's a good definition of superstition, though, Hell I think. Yeah. I like that. So one of the biggest superstitions, of course, throughout at least the Western world, okay. is Friday the 13th. We've all heard of it. Um, this is a day that is constantly referred to as unlucky. And the superstition has led to the development of a late 19th century secret society, an early 20th century novel, and of course the horror movie franchise. I know the horror movie franchise. I know, right? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I would try to do the sound, but I fail every single time. <laughs> See, I, I don't know. <laughs> I hope that was good. I hope that, that was a good rendition. That was good. Me, I'm just over here like. <laughs> 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 oh uh, man um so even though this particular superstition is so intensely ingrained in us it is still unclear as to when the superstition started and what led to this being marketed as the most unluckiest of days all right getting into it good 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 <laughs> All right, oh, this is the hard part. Get ready, folks. Big, huge, giant words, but I have an assistant this time. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so the fear of the number 13 is called triskaidekaphobia. Guess you what? I said it right. You triskaidekaphobia. Yeah. Triskaidekaphobia. Triskaidekaphobia. So 
The fear of the number 13 is called Triskai Decophobia. Be proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> and the more specific fear of Friday the 13th is called both Periscava Decatriophobia. <clears throat> I believe I said that right. Let me see here. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have it pulled up as well. Periscava Decatriophobia. There you go. Periscava Decatriophobia. And the other one that references that is... Um, a reference to fear of Friday the 13th in particular is this one. Friga triskai decaphobia. Friga triskai decaphobia. Friga triskai decaphobia. For Friday the 13th. Yeah, so That's both cool. Periscava decatriophobia and Friga tris. Blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> I said, you almost did. I it. got two of them right. You did. I did good. Freaking proud of you. But um, both of those two refer to the specific fear of Friday the 13th. Um, they're both related to fear of the day itself and essentially are just separated by their initial root word. Um, one of them is Greek and the other is Norse. So the Frigatriskadecophobia one is Norse because it has to do with uh, uh, Friga. Okay. The name of Friday. Right. Right? Yep. In Norse mythology. Oh, I remember. <laughs> um, mostly it got super confusing because they're super hard to pronounce. And um, so I didn't really do a super deep dive on the uh, background between the two separate words and why they're different and everything like that. Just Periscava decatriophobia is Greek and the other one is Norse. Okay. There, there, there. I thought they were all Latin. <laughs> It's like a bastardization of Greek, Latin, and whatever the fuck else. <laughs> uh, so let's start with the fear of the number 13, right? Yeah. So as humans, we have always been fascinated by numbers and have always tried to apply um, spiritual, esoteric, and occult si significance to them throughout our entire history. Yep. Um, like... You know, I personally have, like, that weird obsession of, like, I count everything in threes. Okay. Personally, like, that's my number obsession is, like, I'm constantly counting by threes. Everything is, like, the power of three okay. for me. I don't know why, but I've been like that my whole entire life. You have um your whole thing with, like, you don't like odd numbered years. You know, yeah. like, you don't like being 20. Although this one sucked. Well, <laughs> but I did do things that I'm proud of. Exactly. So it hasn't been a horrible year. But yeah, you're just. But it's been awful. <laughs> you're just more uncomfortable in the odd years than the even years. Two is my favorite number. Yeah. The number two. It has See? been since the fourth grade. And my favorite number, go figure, is 13 because I'm. <laughs> of, of course it's my favorite. Yeah. I'm such a stereotype. I'm a loser. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but I have a. It's significant obsession with the number three. Okay. I don't know why, but I count everything by threes. Everything that I do. All right. I've calmed down on some of that OCD, but it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> it still happens. Um, there is the whole thing of the number 23 enig enigma, um, which is where oh, yeah. people become obsessed with the number and find instances of it everywhere. Yeah, I've definitely heard of that one. Yeah. Um, you know, the Jim Carrey movie made that super prominent and brought a lot of attention to that whole thing yep um there are also many people who believe that the number three is just not is not just lucky but also holy which is maybe why i count in threes fucking i don't know well the the, tr the holy trinity yeah the holy trinity and then yeah. there's the whole thing of like demonology and like three scratches is like implies a demon yeah or three knocks imply like a demon or something, a poltergeist something demonic yeah um because it's like a mocking of the trinity which is why the number 666 is applied to the beast which, yeah yeah um there is of course you know the holy trinity but there are also three main holy sites in the Il islamic faith Oh. So it applies to them as well. I only know of two. I only know of one because I am ignorant of other cultures. Oh. I hate to admit that. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> Which one do you know? Still, <laughs> <laughs> some people believe three is bad or that bad things happen in threes. Um, so, you know, like the whole death comes in threes or 
of course, yep. since you're a stoner, uh, pipes, pipes break in threes. Yeah, they always break in threes. Yeah. It's horrible! And personally, in my family, death does run in threes. Within oh. within a full year cycle, once one person dies within a full year cycle... Sorry if you can hear the trash man, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's loud. But um, within a one-year cycle of the first person dying, at least two other people connected to my family will die. Oh, wow. It's weird. But... I'm not the only, uh, my family isn't the only one that notices that pattern. Right. And it's not just like in the family, but it's like friends connected to the family in certain ways will also pass away. Okay. So it's just. Yeah. Friends um, and family members. Yeah. So then um, in Italy, the number 17 actually replaces the number 13 as the unlucky number. Oh. And they are wary of Fridays that fall on the 17th. That's so cool. Right. Wow. I thought that was super interesting. I did not know that. And then, of course, as I mentioned, there's the most scary and most unsettling number of them all. 666. The number of the beast. My unholy father. Hi, dad. (laughs) Um, So this comes from the book of Revelation in the New Testament. The fear of this number has its own extremely unpronounceable term. (laughs) So let's go back to YouTube for help on pronouncing. Uh, I don't. All right, I found it. Here we go. Yay. Hexacosia, hexaconta, hexaphobia. Hexacosia, hexacontia, hexaphobia. What? I don't know. I'm not even gonna try because, you... like, it's more <laughs> impossible than the other terms that we've come across. Spell. Hexacosia, hexaconta, hexaphobia. Hexacosia, hexaconta, hexaphobia. Sure. There but we yeah, go. <laughs> that is the fear of the number 666. Okay, well, that makes sense. And that gets through us. That gets us through our super unpronounceable words for this episode. Thank God. <laughs> I was able to do two of the four. <laughs> and that's more than I expected. I helped. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the number 12 has also um, has had a long standing of being seen as, quote, the perfect number. 12? Yeah. Okay. Um, The ancient Sumerians are responsible for creating a numeral system that we still use to measure time today, which is why our hours and minutes are based on increments of 12. So you have the two 12 parts of the day, 12 hour parts of the day. Um, Their system is why our days are broken into two 12 hour parts. There are 12 months in a year, 12 zodiac signs, 12 gods of Olympus, 12... 12 tribes of Israel, and 12 days of Christmas. Did you say the 12 apostles? There's 12 apostles. <laughs> but nearly everywhere you look, you can find 12 as an influence, yeah, especially no, that in yeah, religion. Now that you've mentioned it, yeah, like, there's a bunch. 12 is super abundant, and it's seen as like the holiest and most pure number. Okay. Which, with that in mind, it seems nearly logical that with so much significance being hoisted on the shoulders of the number 12, that number 13 never would have stood a chance as being anything other than unlucky and unholy. Right? Yeah. You know, how can you Hmm. follow that? Yeah, I guess it kind of just happens, leads the way. Yeah. So some people think that the fear of the number 13 dates all the way back to the Code of Hammurabi. Whoa. So Hammurabi was the king of Babylon who reigned from 1792 to 1750 BCE. This code is significant because it is one of the earliest and most complete written legal codes. Holy shit. Yeah, it's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, it was a collection of 282 rules that established standards for commercial interaction and set fines and punishments. Um, this is actually where you get the whole eye for an eye, hand for a hand type of law system. But of course, you know, based on your status and who you committed the uh, atrocity against, that could be skewed because it's a lot different for a slave because if a slave like pokes out like a higher authority's eye, they'll, they'll just kill him. Yeah, that makes sense. But, you know, it was the first, like, intense code written specifically with all of that. Um, And this code supposedly admitted a 13th law. 
However, it has been proven that this was nothing more than a clerical error due to one of the earliest translators accidentally skipping a line of text. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, this has st- this hasn't stopped people from citing it as a historical example of the fear of thirteen, though. Yeah, yeah, sounds about right. Could have just been a mistake. Well, it's proven that it's just it was just a mistake. Oh well, then because okay. <laughs> people are gonna be like, no, it was no. It well, was we've meant. we found the actual original code, and then we do have that earlier translation that other translations have been based off of right. which omitted the 13th law but since we found the original codex we're able to prove that like oh yeah no there was a 13th somebody just accidentally skipped it okay um the next cited ancient ancient source for the start of the fear of 13 comes from around 700 bce in greece this is when um hesiod created works and days, which was a farmer's almanac. In this, he wrote, quote, avoid the 13th of the waxing month for beginning to sow, without any explanation of why. Ah. <laughs> so uh, Hesiod could have started the whole fear of the Hesiod, come 13th. on, man. Come on. <laughs> Damn um, it. There are also two distinct instances from theology and myth that might have helped to create the fear of 13. One of them is extremely well known. The Last Supper. Oh, obviously, okay. This was the last meal Jesus had with his 12 disciples the night before he was killed. Did I say apostles? You know what? I don't care. (laughs) Judas, the man that betrayed Jesus, was one of the 13 guests. And due to his betrayal, people often say he was the last to arrive, making him the unlucky (laughs) guest. Of course. There's no way to prove which order they all showed up in because there's no way to prove that this actually happened. Exactly. It's just a... Not to say that it didn't happen and I'm not bad-mouthing Christianity, but... There's no proof as to the order of the arrival of the apostles. So saying that Judas showed up last, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Either way, Judas betrayed Jesus. And we don't know because we weren't there. Exactly. And, you know, people are just going to infer and they're going to lay over top what they already have as established beliefs. So if you already have an established fear of the number 13, of course, you're going to associate that to Judas because Judas is. Why not? The I worst mean, of the worst, you know, the highest treason. Yeah. Right? People still get Judas. <laughs> <laughs> so the second instance in uh, theology that brings dun, 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 this up dun. is one of my favorite because it comes from Norse mythology. Oh, okay. So this is the story of a dinner party with the 12 most important gods of Valhalla. Holy shit. Of the Acer. Oh. Um, so Loki, the trickster, shows up to this party uninvited, proceeds to get super drunk and spouts off to everyone at the party. He, of course, was the 13th guest and that spelled disaster for the gods. Hell yeah, Loki. No. <laughs> After this, Loki held so much resentment, especially for Baldur, one of Odin's sons. Oh, I like Baldur. And he looked for a way to kill him. Yep. Baldur's mother, Frigg, is given the prophecy that says he will be killed. So she goes on a quest to ask every item in the nine worlds not to harm him, missing one small harmless plant, mistletoe. <laughs> Loki learns of this and tips a spear with the plant and gives it to Hodor. Not that Hodor. But gives it to Hodor. Um, While the gods were playing a game of throwing dangerous items at Baldur and watching them bounce off of him. So Hmm. Hodor was blind and was not participating. So Loki comes to him, gives him the spear and helps him line up his shot and um, helps him line up his shot and disappears to let Hodor take the consequences. Of course, everyone knows Loki is behind the tragedy, and this is what eventually led to Loki being tied to a rock in a cave by his son's intestines with poison from a snake dripping on his forehead for eternity until he escapes and brings out the events of Ragnarok. Oh, 2020? 
<laughs> <laughs> Has anybody checked on Loki lately? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, there's Poison. so much to this story. It's it's one of my favorites because well, it's North myth- Norse mythology, so of course it's my favorite. Um, yeah. But there's so much to this, and honestly, I could spend several episodes just talking about this story. But I'm going to refer you, once again, to Myths and Legends because Jason Weiser has done a fantastic job of laying out this story in a much better way than I ever could dream of. So seriously, check out Myths and Legends if you're interested. All of his stuff on Norse mythology is absolutely fantastic. Hell yeah. I and love I love that podcast. It's so good. It's my favorite. <laughs> so anyways, back to the main point. Uh, this dinner party that brings about the events leading to Ragnarok is another example of an early story that points to the fear of the number 13. Right. So with these two stories, uh, these two stories would also lead to long-held superstition that to a long-held superstition that parties of 13 would cause one of the attendees to die within a year. Ooh, shit. Right? That's a big superstition. So you don't have dinner parties with 13 guests or somebody's going to die. So 12's good, 14's good, but... You got to make sure that all 14 show up, though, if you're going to oh, go with that. Man. What if, like, <laughs> 16 show up and then three leave? <laughs> <laughs> This led to a custom in Europe and early America that stated only 12 people should attend any dinner parties. Then, on January 13th, 1882, at 8.13 p.m., Captain William Fowler, a Civil War veteran, gathered with 12 friends at his establishment, the Knickerbocker Cottage, on the corner of 6th Avenue and 28th Street in New York City for the first meeting of the 13 Club. My man. What year? In 18... 1882. Okay. Fuck yeah. Um... Fowler was obsessed with the number 13, and his entire life seemed to revolve around the number, but not in a negative way. All right. He actually sought to undo the sig- the stigma surrounding it. Hell yeah. He set up the 13 Club as an exclusive secret society that would consist of 13 men meeting in room 13 on the 13th day of the month for a 13-course dinner with 13 candles that spilled... And spilled salt near each setting. 13 courses is too many. Right? How do you even eat that much food? I mean, I get it. Gotta keep <laughs> gotta keep it with the <laughs> I mean, I guess the if 13. they're super tiny courses, but... Maybe, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, he also set other ru- rules to flout superstition awesome. for these meetings. Each, men- each member had to pass under a ladder upon entering the room. They were to bring umbrellas and open them once inside, and they were not allowed to throw the spilt salt over their shoulders. <laughs> During the first meeting, it is reported a banner hung over with overhead with the phrase, this is Latin, so mortii turi te solitamite. Perfect Latin. Totally nailed it. Um, but this means those of us who are about to die salute you. Oh, man. My, my brain went to ACDC so hard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so after one year, it was reported that none of the members had died. And this led to many other 13 clubs being founded throughout the United States. Oh, shit. Eventually, five U.S. presidents would claim membership to the club. <gasps> Chester A. Arthur. My man. Grover Cleveland. My other man. Benjamin Harrison. Don't know him. William Mc- <laughs> William McKinley. I don't like McKinley. And your absolute favorite. Oh, no way. Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Love you, Teddy. Miss you. It's, Too soon. It's funny because his nephew was actually terrified of the number 13. His, the, Teddy's nephew? Yeah. Oh, wow. Who's his nephew? What's his fucking name? I don't know. The other one? Names. Was he the other president? Yeah. Oh, FDR? Yeah, thank you. Franklin? Yeah. Delano. Roosevelt. Wasn't it Delanor? 
no. <laughs> it was Delano. Cool, cool. I know more about uh, good old Teddy than Wasn't I do the Delano? other one. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. I haven't Ooh. studied U.S. history a lot. Man, he would be afraid of the number 13. He would be. Uh, Teddy was way cooler. Well, Teddy was a fucking hardcore motherfucker. Yes. Also kind of a dick, but, you know, hey, whatever. Hey, we don't... It was okay for him to be a dick at the time. Bully! Bully! <laughs> <laughs> um, composer Arnold Schroenberg... Perfect. ...was not as brave in the face of the number 13. Oh. He was terribly afraid of the number, and it plagued him throughout his life. Jeez. He was born on September 13th, 1874, which may have been the root of his fear because he felt that it was a bad omen for his life. He avoided everything that had to do with 13. He even numbered his measure count with 12A rather than 13. That's amazing. He eventually created the 12 tone system of musical composition that made him famous just to avoid having to work with the number 13. And that <sighs> composition is still used to this day. That's intense. He was terrified of dying on a year or at an age that was a multiple of 13. Oh man, 13 and 26 must have been rough. He died on Friday the 13th Dude. of July. 1951 at the age of 76 which 7 plus 6 equals 13 oh man and the fucked up part is that after he turned 76 a friend of his quote friend pointed out to him that 7 plus 6 equals 13 <laughs> so he became overly paranoid that he was going to die that year and guess what he died on a Friday the 13th of that year. So he's, oh man. So he's thinking about it the whole time he's alive uh, on the year 70s. He's like, this is my year. Yeah. And then it is. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of fucked up. That is fucked up. But yeah, he. Um, what a nice friend. He created a whole new musical composition, way to do musical composition, just because of his th fear of the number 13. That's amazing. So still to this day, there's evidence of the long-held superstition surrounding 13. There are tons of buildings still here in the U.S. that don't have a 13th floor. Hotels, ships, hospitals, and airports are all still try to avoid having rooms and gates numbered 13, just like we talked about. Damn. It's still, still a thing. Still today. Yeah. yeah it's I still mean... a huge superstition today. People are super afraid of it. Man, that makes me like it a lot. This is why it's like one of my favorite numbers. Yeah. <laughs> also because the age of 13 was fucking rad. <laughs> I had so much fun as a 13 year old. Ooh. <laughs> I don't remember. I mean, I still suffered from severe depression, but that's when I got into super good music. Oh, okay. And became super fucking emo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great year. Good year. <laughs> um so yeah that's all about the number 13 so what's the deal with friday well yeah. of course christian tradition holds that jesus was crucified on friday and this is why they celebrate good friday yep right yep i remember that but this may have eventually led to many christian areas believing fridays were bad luck in fact eve supposedly gave adam the forbidden, the forbidden fruit on Friday, and Cain may have even killed Abel on Friday. Frickin' Cain. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, they don't even know, but they're just like, it happened on a Friday. They don't even know. <laughs> it's like, you know what day this probably happened on, right? Fridays suck. It must have been a Friday. <laughs> why, did, why did ancient people hate Fridays when we love? Well, we love them so much because Friday is the start of the weekend. It's, yeah. You get through work and then guess what? You can go out drinking. Totally. <laughs> totally what I do all the time. Well, we don't even have normal weekends. We have fucking Tuesdays and Wednesdays off. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the real start of Fridays um, being seen as unlucky 
may come from the 14th century with Chaucer's work, um, The Canterbury Tales. Ooh. In this, he depicts Friday as, quote, a day of misfortune. However, this does not necessarily mean that Friday being unlucky was a wide-held belief during the 14th century. His works were more mock tragedy and reference, um, and the reference is probably more layered than literal. He was kind of a smart ass. Okay. <laughs> um, it would still be around another 200 years before we start to see better evidence of this belief being widespread. All right. In 1592, playwright Robert Green created the expression Friday face, meaning, quote, a look of gloom or dismay. Ooh. Then in 1633, William Rowley, in his play A Match at Midnight, described, quote, a plague of Friday mornings, the most unfortunate day in the whole week. Jeez, man. Twenty years later, Richard Flecknoe wrote, quote, now Friday came, you old wives say, of all this week's the unluckiest day. Then in 1898... The Dictionary of Phrase and Fable confirmed that Friday was considered an unlucky day in Spain. 1898? 1898. It's not that long ago. Really not. No. So it really wasn't until, honestly, it wasn't really until 1633 and William Rowley that we actually have evidence that Friday may have actually been seen as a negative thing, a negative day. And unlucky. It sounds about right. Because even in 1592, with Robert Greene and the expression of Friday face, we don't really know if he just was making something up or going off of Chaucer's yeah. shit or like if there actually was some sort of wider. Could have been just a nod. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it could have been, you know, something that didn't make sense to anybody at the time but it was like him trying to be like William Shakespeare and create new language and all of that stuff. Okay. You know. Friday face. As new, right as writers want to do. New thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Haven't you heard of it? <laughs> we hate Fridays around here. Uh we wait for Sunday. <laughs> On Fridays we wear black because it sucks. <laughs> Uh, so the concept of Friday as an unlucky day is most prevalent in maritime cultures. They believe that, is a, that it is unlucky to begin a voyage on, on a Friday. And in the 19th century, Admir oh God, Admiral William Henry Smith, in his work, The Sailor's Word Book, called Friday Dies in Fautius or Unlucky Day. Jeez, oh, everybody's just like, man. Fuck Friday. This day sucks. <laughs> this God. this belief this belief led to the urgent myth of the HMS Friday. Hmm? So the HMS Friday, this is a myth that um, the Royal Navy wanted to prove that the superstition of not setting sail on Fridays was untrue. According to the story, they named the ship Friday, gathered her crew on a Friday. Signed a captain named James Friday and Dude. set off on her maiden, maiden voyage on Friday the 13th. The ship was never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> the universe just holding up two middle fingers like, you got through, I You fuckers. <laughs> so there's actually no evidence of this... Um, this thing at all there's no what the hell evidence of the royal navy ever having a ship called friday <laughs> no one really knows where the story actually came from oh man you know could this be a conspiracy or it's more likely just an urban legend i like both of those options <laughs> right honestly it's it, it's one of those stories that's like a little bit too good to be true like oh they're gonna build a ship Call it Friday. <laughs> Gather her crew on Friday. Yeah. Find a captain literally named Friday and I, then set sail on Friday to never be seen again. It, it all lays out a little bit too perfectly yeah, it does. for it to be a logical, actual, factual story. So, I mean, why would you just like, what if you like made the ship on Monday? You're like, all right, we got to wait five days. 
What do you guys want to do? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have to sign the crew on Friday and only take people that come on Friday. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> I'm Captain Friday. What do you fucking think? Yeah. How hard would it be to actually find a person named Friday that could be a captain of a ship? It's probably... Like, you would have to have the captain the first and then be like, I have a fucking idea. The statistics behind it are not, I have not never, looking great. I've never met a person with the last name Friday. I'm sure they exist, yeah. but I've never met one. Same. Which tells me that it's not prevalent. <laughs> Maybe people were getting their names back <laughs> from the day of the week when they were in back in the day. I don't know. He was born on a Thursday. His name is James Friday. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> um, so, of course, we can't talk about Friday the 13th without talking about the most famous one of them all. Is this the one that I know? Friday the 13th, 1307. I know this one! I'm excited. Sorry. It was October the 13th as well. Sorry, I missed. Ooh, it was in October spoke. as well? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. I just knew that it was on Friday the 13th and in 1307. That's yes. all I knew. So, of course, this is the story that most people will point to as the cause of Friday the 13th being known as unlucky. There was so much history before it, though. I love it. Yeah, but we don't have time to go into all of that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm excited for this. So on this day, officers of King Philip IV arrested hundreds of members of the Knights Templar. Philip. The Knights Templar, of course, was the military order created during the Crusades. They were founded around 1118 and were to help protect wow. the religious pil pilgrims traveling to the Holy Land after the First Crusade. They quickly became one of the richest and most powerful groups of the Middle Ages and competed with other monastic orders for dominance of the Holy Land and Europe. By the 14th century, the Templars had a vast collection of castles, churches, and banks in Western Europe and had amassed a, an astonishing amount of wealth. One person with an eye on that wealth was King Philip IV of France. <sighs> About a month before the raid, King Philip sent secret documents throughout France with lurid, lurid details about the Templars' involvement in black magic and sex rituals. Of course, that's how you turn, that's how you turn a people. Yep. Especially highly religious people. They oh, worship yeah. Satan and have sex with boys. Run! <laughs> well, I would run from that, but... <laughs> the sex with boys part? Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. But the Satanist part... Well, and uh, Not so much. I do agree that the Templars were extremely overpowered and just had so much money that they could literally do anything that they wanted. In my personal opinion, I feel that the Knights Hospitaller were far more powerful than the Knights Templar. But most people don't talk about them because they were based mostly in Germany and Eastern Europe. That's what I thought. Yeah, they, they weren't like in Italy and France and stuff. Yeah. Um... But they were pretty powerful. And yep. they are the whole thing behind the Baltic Crusades, where the Knights Hospital are. And that and is just, a very sad story. Yeah, we don't, we're not getting into it now. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so uh, King Philip had claimed that the order worshipped Satan and needed to be stopped. In reality, he just wanted all of their money. Sounds 99%. Correct. <laughs> yeah. He had already done similar things with the Lombards, which was a powerful uh, banking group, yes. and the Jews in France to fill his coffers. Yeah. So everybody that had good control on money, he had already taken down. So, of course, he's going to set his sights on the Templars because... I wonder what he's going to do with all the money. Piss it away and do nothing. Mm. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> then on Friday, October 13th, 1307... Philip gave the order and the raid began. Over the following days and weeks, more raids on Templar establishments took place and more than 600 men were arrested. Among these men were hundreds of non-combatants, middle-aged men that were only there to take care of the day-to-day -day activities to keep the castle working. Damn. Not, fucking A. The barely Templars of the Templars. Yeah. 
And these were generally old men. Yeah, who've like fought before and who are crippled and, now are just and like, like I'm ready to retire. Yeah, or old men who weren't a part of it when in their younger years, but are getting closer to death and want to get closer to God. So they join the Templars, and the only thing that they can really contribute is to help around the castle yeah, and help do some farm work. You know, yeah, help in that way so that stuff. they can get closer to God as they get ready to die. Oh man, that sucks. Yep. So the men were all charged with a a wide array of offenses, including heresy, devil worship, spitting on the cross, homosexuality, Mm. fraud, and financial corruption. Here we go. Nearly all of them were brutally tortured, and many wound up giving in to the torture and gave confessions. Oh, yeah. Which is why torture doesn't work, because you're going to say anything to make it fucking stop. Yep. Which is why we had the whole fucking witch trials fiasco that went on for couple centuries because Could you imagine Ugh. the more harm you cause to a person the more they're going to want you to stop and the more times you push a one instance of being like oh you're a devil worshiper oh you're a devil worshiper eventually they're going to be like yeah i fucking worship the devil please stop please take that out of me yeah for real though could you imagine the torture back in that time oh i know a lot about the torture I of that don't time know a but lot. I, I know a couple things i've done a lot of research because I went to a torture torture museum when I was, I think, like 10 years old. I saw some torture devices. And then, of course, that whole Iron Maiden thing from Matilda. <laughs> yeah. It, it interested me because I didn't think that that was a real thing until I saw it in that museum. And then I was like, wait, this is fucking real? And I got super interested. So I've done a lot of research about torture devices. And, oh, my God, there's some gross torture out there. We don't need to talk about it. <laughs> So this particular incident led to a large array of conspiracy theories and even the founding of some secret societies. But the only connection to this incident and our modern day superstition of Friday the 13th is from Dan Brown's novel, The Da Vinci Code. Oh, 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 good book. (laughs) I actually never read it. Me either. Yeah. (laughs) I've never even seen the movie either. Okay, get with the times. I don't know. I think I watched it once. I would rather learn the real secrets of the Vatican than... Watch a movie about it. Watch a Hollywood movie about it. Well, read a made-up story that embellishes things and stuff like that. But yeah. Anyways, in reality, the downfall of the Templars is just coincidence. There is no historical proof that this is the origin or has anything to do at all with the date being on Friday the 13th or that being an unlucky day as a consequence. That idea really only came into play during the 20th century. What? Really? Yeah. Friday the 13th being unlucky didn't really start until the 20th century. And then we just kind of brought it back to that time of when the Templars were... Well, Dan Brown brought it back to the Templar connection. Freaking Dan! Come on! He's the one that made that connection. Of course, you know, people have always had the whole conspiracy theories of the Templars. You know, the Templars didn't actually die. They fled with a massive treasure. They had... You know, the Holy Grail and the uh, Ark of the Covenant. It's all on Oak Island. (laughs) Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if those guys are ever going to find that treasure. It's a good show, though. Good luck on you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But yeah, uh, Dan uh, Brown is the only one that made the connection of Friday the 13th to the Templars. But even so, Friday the 13th itself wasn't actually an unlucky day until... The 20th century. Okay. So in 1907, Thomas Lawson, a notorious stock stock market promoter, wrote a book called Friday the 13th. In it, a fictional stockbroker deliberately crashes the stock market on that day. About a year later, in 1908, the New York Times became one of the first media outlets to acknowledge the superstition of Friday the 13th. Quote, Friday the 13th hold no no terrors for Senator Owen. Oh, shit. The article was about the senator introducing 13 new bills. Oh, you can't do that. After this, the superstition continued to grab hold of people. Then in 1980, the horror movie franchise Friday the 13th was released and led to 12 movies, only f- only 5 of which take place on Friday the 13th. Freaking oh, just 
Yeah, they Fuck have the story after they, the fifth one. They have twelve movies. Twelve. They need to make another. Because <laughs> then it's thirteen. They do. They do. Wait, do you? Is that counting the Freddy versus Jason one? In the twelve. I believe so. We're gonna find out for you. <laughs> but only five of the the Friday the Thirteenth movies actually take place on a Friday the Thirteenth. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, which is weird to me, right? <laughs> this would be like the only day he can come back. Come on. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Freddy versus Jason was actually kind of cool. I liked it because it was to the freaking... Well, Freddy has always been one of my favorites. I mean, I have a stuffed, stuffed animal named Freddy because of Freddy Krueger. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but he, it creeps me out because it has to do with dreams. It's just interesting. Yeah, well... How do you stop it? You, <laughs> you can't. You, everybody has to sleep eventually. Because if you don't sleep, you die. Yeah. So. And if you sleep, you die. It's a catch-22. Get the fuck out of the town. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it only that time? I forget the story. Anyway. I know. It's been so long since I've seen it. So the real consequences to the... um, There are... Sorry. There are real consequences to this superstition. No. Today, it is estimated that between 17 and 21 million people in the U.S. are affected by the fear of Friday the 13th. Holy shit. Some people are so paralyzed by the fear that they will avoid doing their normal routines. Just People will avoid getting married, traveling, yeah. going to work, and some will even avoid getting out of bed altogether. Okay, that's just too much. That's uh, getting not getting out of bed. This contributes to a loss of between 700 and 900 million dollars in revenue on that day. Oh my god. Plane tickets tend to be cheaper on flights scheduled on Friday the 13th since most people won't want to push their luck and fly. Stock prices also tend to fall on Friday the 13th, which seems to make Lawson's book more prophecy than fiction. Damn, just because, oh man. Uh, he just, he put that energy out there and the human and humans just reacted to it. Yeah. Oh, uh, once it's out, you can't take it back either. And then, what, freaking the New York Times, is it? Yeah, reported. They, they just rep- yep. <sighs> uh, one year later, reported. Oh, the senator is not afraid of Friday the Thirteenth. Oh man, they they fucked it up. And <laughs> they, it just ran after that. It just got out of control. Goes to show how media sets a course for things. Right. It's, it's crazy how much they do. Yep. But it's it's funny to me, like that people are so afraid that they completely avoid their normal routines. Yeah. Because like my family, especially my aunt thought that Friday the 13th was the luckiest day and that's the day that you should gamble. Wow. Like, my aunt every single Friday the 13th makes a point to go out to Wendover, Nevada so that she can gamble because she's in Utah. Yeah, because well she yeah, so she's in Salt Lake City. <laughs> Sorry. So she has to go to Wendover, Nevada because no gambling there. Yeah. But yeah, my mom used to go with her all the fucking time. And when when Friday the Thirteenth landed in October, that was like double lucky for my aunt. I I bet the casinos weren't as full. They weren't. I bet you they were like kind of empty. And the the slot machines, which is what my aunt played, were a lot looser and paid out a little bit better on Friday the Thirteenth. I could kind of see why, because they're like nobody's fucking playing. Yeah, ah! and my aunt is one of the most superstitious people that I've ever met in my life. Like I've watched her play slot machines, and she has like this weird ritual of like rubbing down the machine and touching things in like a certain order. Get out of town. Yeah, a super crazy person. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but yeah, let's go to Nevada. So it's it's just. It's weird to me that my family is like, oh, no, Friday the 13th is lucky. And then there's other people that are like, I'm so afraid of this day. I'm not even going to get out of bed. Yeah, my family had there was nothing about it. It was a normal freaking day. You get up, right? go to work, go to school, whatever. There's Half the time I don't even realize it's it. Friday the 13th because most of the time I don't know what day of the week it is. And the other half of the time I don't know what the date is. Yeah, and I was I was even raised. I was raised extremely Catholic. And there was never even a big deal about it. Well, it's because it's it's not necessarily a part of the religion. It's just yeah. some Christians have made the number 13 or Friday an unlucky or unholy type of day. But it's not really prominent in the religion itself. Right. That's, uh, 
That's so weird to me. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. It is. It, it's it really weird. is. Because it's just a, it's just a number that ancient humans made up back in the day. It was just to count things, just to put order to things, and mm-hmm. then, but like you said, we've been putting weird meanings to numbers forever since we have. that's why we have numerology yep. numerology exists oh, because of a... our obsession with numbers and counting things. numerology is pretty fun numerology is fucking I, fascinating i haven't gotten too deep into it but what for me and Tra- what travis and i looked up yeah and travis got it way deeper into it than me Whew, yeah travis super cool. got into it but yeah it's really interesting it's really fascinating yeah and like i said i have like weird counting obsessions and things have to be in threes Yep. Which is why I have OCD. (laughs) Anyways, so in more recent times, the number of traumatic events that have occurred, there are a number of traumatic events that have occurred on Friday the 13th, including the German bombing of Buckingham Palace in September 1940, the murder of Kitty Genovese, I think is how you say her last name. I'm not sure. In Queens, New York. This was the murder that was supposedly witnessed by 37 people in an apartment complex and was not reported. There has been um, new claims on that, that um, it wasn't, you know, witnessed or like the people did actually report what they saw and stuff like that. But that was the like headline. The big headline for her murder was that 37 people in her apartment complex saw her attacked by the man and said absolutely nothing at all heard her screams as she was dying and did nothing but that ha- that has since been disproven so that was like a nope, um, real. an article f- <laughs> <laughs> sorry <sighs> love you <laughs> but that took place in march uh 1964 oh okay um there was also a cyclone that killed more than 300,000 people in what? bangladesh Holy in november shit. 1970 a s- 300,000 3 Unless I typed it wrong, but 300,000 in Bangladesh. Oh, that, but Bangladesh shit. is very, it's, it's very populous. Popular. Yeah, it's a lot of populous. Yeah, populous. so I could see how that could happen. And that was in yeah. November of 1970. And then there was the disappearance of a Ch- uh, Chilean Air Force plane in the Andes in October 1972. Ooh. The death of rapper Tupac Shakur no. in September 1996. That happened on a Friday the 13th. Oh, man. And the crash of the Costa Con- Concordia cruise ship off the coast of it- Italy, which killed 30 people in January 2012. All of that happened on a Friday the 13th. Dang. Whether it's just coincidence or well, bad luck. See, and then my my logic part of my brain goes... Well, yeah, but what else happened on all the other days? <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the thing. Like, the um, New Orleans uh, disaster. What was that? Are you talking about Hurricane Katrina? That one. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name of the hurricane. I was like, oh, I mean... man. But Hurricane Tr- Katrina didn't happen on a Friday the 13th. You know, 9-11 wasn't on a 13th. I wasn't born on Friday the 13th. <laughs> You know, all the bus bombings, those yeah, those I mean, aren't necessarily on Friday the 13th. So it's more like, how much stock are you putting into these things happened because it was Friday the 13th versus... They just happened because... It just so happened to happen yeah. on a Friday the 13th. Yeah. You know. See, I think that's where I that's where I grew up with is like, well, yeah, like this stuff did happen on Friday, but other shit has happened all throughout history on different days. Exactly. <laughs> bad shit too yeah some really terrible disasters have not happened on friday the 13th but some bad things have happened on friday the 13th Mm, yes definitely indubitably (laughs) so that's my information on friday the 13th oh my gosh and why we think it's creepy creepy that was a good history lesson i really like that right isn't it I only knew about the Templar thing. I really didn't know much anything else about it. I knew that some people still didn't build their buildings with a 13th floor because mm-hmm. of the Templar thing. It still blows my mind. Yeah. To this day. Yeah. Um, it, it's crazy to think about. Like, I knew that um, 13 was considered an unholy number, and I figured it was because 12 is so 
perfect of a number. See, I just knew that 12 was a good number, or 12 was a very used number, not even necessarily that it was a good number. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy how much is, like, put on the number 12, you know? And that's just with our society. That's not saying, like, planetary-wise, because, like, right. Eastern um, cultures, like, Asian cultures have completely different numbers that they oh, think yeah. are lucky or unlucky and well like you said in italy it's uh 17 17 yeah is like, more unlucky dang yeah you know so it's it depends on the culture and the environment and you know the u.s puts more stock on friday the 13th and that than right. europe does but there are still people in europe who are like "Ooh, it's unlucky definitely you know but it's really culturally based and i mean in reality it's a fairly recent concept that Friday the 13th is an unlucky day. Dang. That was good. Yeah. I really like that. I didn't know that much about Friday the 13th. Me either. I knew it was a good movie franchise. I know there's one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Some yeah. people are freaked out. So this Friday is Friday the 13th. <laughs> so if you have a coworker and not show up to work on Friday... You know why. Because they're afraid. But don't give them shit. Like, <laughs> come on. You got things that you're afraid of that you, you really shouldn't be afraid of. You can't prove it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, all right. So well, did you want to share one of your creepy, spooky personal experiences? I do have a couple of yeah, yeah, let's spooky do it. stories since, for the people today. Since nobody sent us their stories yep, yet, we'll throw still. in our own. It's, it's cool. Yeah, it's all right. Whatever. We weren't looking forward <laughs> to hearing your stories, yeah. but, you know. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I do have some stories that I'm going to talk about today, but I just want to tell everybody that these are personal stories that happened to me or friends of mine. And uh, they are just things that I cannot explain. So you can believe them or not. I don't care. <laughs> I cannot explain these things that happened to me. <laughs> yeah. And, it, you know, if you're a skeptic, you know, that's fine. If you if you listen to this as a skeptic, that's totally fine. This is a judgment free zone. If you think you've seen something we're not going to judge you. We're not going to judge you if you think it's an alien or if you think it's a god or if you think it's your grandma. It doesn't matter. This is a totally judgment-free zone. Because <laughs> I just like people's creepy stories. And I do take into consideration the side of skepticism. Yep. Because all of it makes sense and all of it plays its own personal role. We have to have skeptics in order to have stories like this even be a thing. Because... Yeah, if ghosts were just widely accepted as fact, they wouldn't be quite as fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the mysterious spooky side that makes it the most fun. Yep. And to have it be mysterious and spooky, you need the people that are like, it's not real. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so with that, here is my first story. I'm going to give you two today because the one's, first one's kind of short. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so... I'm a teenager in high school, and my parents' old home that they just sold is the location. <laughs> so I'm just hanging out with my buddy Zach, and we're, you know, it's time for bed. He doesn't want to sleep on the floor in my bedroom. Totally understandable. So he opts for the couch in the living room, and I go to sleep in my bedroom. Well, as we were just laying there, getting ready to fall asleep. Neither of us had fallen asleep. Something happened. So my point of view, my side of the story is I just hear a little bit. of I just hear noise. So the refrigerator in my old home, if you left the door open for a while, it, after a while, it would go beep, beep, beep. It would do three beeps to let you know that it was open so you can get up and go close it. Yep. Confirmed. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I was in that house for a little bit. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> and it got aggressive, too, after a minute. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> yeah, it got it got louder. as you, If you left it open after yeah. the first three beeps, it would get louder. <laughs> but, so, I'm just laying in bed, and all of a sudden, I hear the fridge go off. And this was after, this was out, uh, maybe like half an hour after Zach and I had 
parted and gone to sleep and gone and laid down. And all of a sudden I hear the refrigerator go off. It goes beep, beep. And then the third beep is every single fire alarm in the house goes off just once and then stops and then it gets silent. So it goes beep, beep, beep. Cause the all of the fire alarms are really loud. The fridge mm-hmm. isn't that loud. The fire alarms are loud. That's so creepy. So I hear that and I'm instantly wide awake. Um, it's never happened before. I was I was confused from the beginning, and I was kind of I was kind of nervous. Uh, it's supposed to just beep three times on the fridge. Well, and it's weird that every single fire alarm beeped as well. Cause like the one in my room, the one in the hallway, the one in the kitchen. The living room, there was at Gunner's room, my brother, his well, went off. It's so weird because like, you know, when you have a fire alarm beep, like it's usually just one, mm-hmm. you know, and it's usually because it's out of batteries or. And it does the whole beep, beep, beep thing. Or, yeah. or, or sometimes beep. it's just, yeah, that annoying chirp that happens yeah, every that little, once in a while. And oh, then you can fair. never track down which fucking one is just doing it. Just take all the batteries out and throw them away. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> Sorry. So that's what I hear. After that third beat from the fire alarms, I hear footsteps coming to my door. Turns out it's Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Real lead up to just Zach. <laughs> Turns out it's Zach, terrified as fuck. Well, no shit. Asking like... if he can sleep on my floor. <laughs> <laughs> I said, get the fuck in here. <laughs> he's like, so we talk about it for a minute and I'm like, Did... and he, he's like, you heard that, right? And I was like, Yes. I heard that. I have no idea what the fuck happened. He's like, well, I heard more. And I was like, uh, oh, yeah. And uh, chill. So what What Zach had told me after that, and this is a long time ago. I'm pretty sure this is what he said. I'm like 90% sure that this is what happened. So Zach's out there sleeping on the couch, you know, and before the fire, oh, the whole thing, he hears growling and... It's a deep guttural, just David. Yeah, and then he hears footsteps, but they're not—they're like high-pitched clacking footsteps. Ew, gross, gross. Like, yeah, it, it was—it wasn't just like. Wait, like Izzy's toenails on the yes, fucking wood it sounds, floor? It sounded kind of like that, but like slower, oh. like clunk, clunk, clunk. Oh god! After that, the fridge went off. Oh my god! And did the whole fridge and fire alarm thing. Oh that God. was that, that was what Zach had to deal with. So he was he was startled awake by the growl, and then he just sat there kind of scared, listening to everything else. After the fire alarm went off, he got the he got the hell up and came into my room. After he told me that, I was I was kind of frightened. It was pretty hard to sleep that night. But we just, you know. Bro, that's creepy as fuck. We, <laughs> we kinda we, we both aren't really religious, but we said we said some sort of prayer to well, kind of yeah. kind of give us a little bit of shielding from anything that was there because that was that is a night that I cannot explain. I'll remember it forever, bro. That sounds like a and, fucking hellhound. And I feel bad for Zach because he had to deal with more than me. <laughs> he yeah, but isn't I that only... like the story of Zach? Yeah, sorry, buddy. <laughs> he deals with so much. Sorry, friend. (laughs) (laughs) So that's my first story. (laughs) So creepy. Like, do do we have time for one more or should I? Yeah, go for it. All right. Ready for number two. So this one involves, you guessed it, Zach. (laughs) So um, Zach had moved to Darrington recently and he wanted me to come out and hang out with him for a little bit. Darrington is a little town in Washington. It uh, was destroyed by that landslide that recently happened. Not recently, but a couple years back, there was a really big mudslide, and Darrington was pretty much swallowed. It's like near Arlington, Washington. I can definitely tell I was not born in Washington, because no. I'm not entirely sure. It, it's it's a place. It, um, yep. Very small community. Very small, like, you know, one grocery store. It's really small. A movie store. Yeah. Post office. There's a lot of those tiny towns in store. Washington, it seems That's like. That's fucking it. 
<laughs> yeah, there's just small towns outside of big towns. Yeah, that's what it seems like. It seems like you have yeah. your concentration of like some large cities, and then it's just rural as fuck. Yeah, you had. To, <laughs> I it's the first time I ever went on the Port Townsend ferry. Because there's a there's a ferry from Port Townsend that that goes over to a, a place that I yeah. don't know. I've never been on it. I've been on the whale tour from Port Townsend. I haven't done that. But <laughs> I've never been on the Port Townsend ferry. We should do that. Actually, we should go up to those islands because that place is fucking dope. Yeah, we should. I'm down. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I go over to Darrington, and I actually have two stories from Darrington, but you're only getting one. <laughs> and it's not even that it's the it's the less cool one so you're gonna have to listen for the other one <laughs> so there's this place called it's just an old mill it's just an old abandoned rundown mill private property it's trespassing as soon as you go on there so don't go on there <laughs> <laughs> but we went up there and it was called suicide mill now i've never been to darrington this was like i was just there for a week so it was just one of the nights we, we went up and did something because there's nothing to do in Darrington. That's how small <laughs> towns are. There's nothing to do. So we're in this mill and it's pretty open. There is a staircase that goes up. There is a a tube that you can go down and go down to another level. But, you know, so it's pitch it's pitch black and nothing's really happening. We just got started. Nothing's picking up on the recorder because we brought recorders with us. Um, As you're wont to do on a ghost yeah. hunt. And it's around 10, 11, pretty early for ghost hunting. So nothing's really going on. So we decided to put a bunch of powder down, a bunch of uh, baking powder, baking soda. I can't remember which one. Um, white powder. White powder. And uh, it. Uh, as soon as we started putting the powder down... And started exploring more. That's when stuff kind of started to happen. You just heard random noises. Or you saw something darker in the dark. <laughs> you know. Just just really simple shit. Oh, gross. I know it freaks you out. But it doesn't freak me out. It freaks me out. But in like a fun good way. But it's still <laughs> freaky. So we start to try and ag it on. Like hey show yourself. You know all this stuff. Okay, Zach Baggins. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty cool. <laughs> oh. Tap out. Sorry. Um, <laughs> fucking. So we decide we. The people that I was with, there was a Patrick, Emily, I think. Doc. We called him Doc because his name was Brian, but my name was Brian. So he was Doc. <laughs> <laughs> there can only be one Brian. Did I say Patrick? Yeah. I remember Pat. He's like one of the ones I remember because you don't meet a lot of people named Patrick. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Fine. All I've right. met several. <laughs> like three. <laughs> Utah. <laughs> no, I just lived in a larger concentrated area. Yeah, you did. Definitely. So I was exposed to more people. <laughs> Can I get back to my story? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Whatever. So um, one of them has a doll or a little toy figure that they found and took from the mill like a week ago. Yeah, he shouldn't have taken it, but he mm. took it. He was bringing it back because he wanted to have a stronger reaction happen. So he did this all on purpose on himself. He just, he's just brave, brave dude. I can't remember his name. Brave, brave or dumb. Either one. Because like for real, did the spirit follow him home and yeah. like fuck it followed with him it, well, at home? It followed him home and it learned, his, it, it learned his name and his child's name. He had a kid that was involved. That's crap. Yeah, the 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 kid comes up in the the kid comes up on the bridge, but we're gonna talk about that later. Oh God! <laughs> so uh, the night goes on. It's like midnight, getting closer to twelve thirty, and we decide that we're gonna go. Me, Zach, the guy with the doll, and Patrick, all go up to the very top floor. There's like three stories up to this mill, and as we're going, we pass one of our powder marks, and there is just scratch marks all through the powder marks. Like oh. there's footprints and there's three claw marks specifically like three in, in a different fluid uh. motion. It could have been any one of them, but I really don't think it was because none of us had the intention of trying to scare each other. We were literally just trying to explore, but I'm not going to say whatever it was. It was freaky in the moment. I'll tell you that. 
Well, yeah, especially the three lines, because as we mentioned earlier in the episode, mm -hmm. the it's like that's that, why demons do things like the three scratches or three knocks is like it's the mocking of the Holy Trinity. Yep. And so generally demon scratches come in three lines. Yep. Which is so gross. That's, see, and I knew that. So did Zach. And I think that was it because mm. they just they were just thinking ghost. But as soon as I saw that, I kind of got a little freaked out. But I didn't tell anybody because I was just like, eh. Zach didn't tell anybody either. Uh, me and Zach talked about it later. Um, but when we went up to the very top floor, we poured out a new circle of powder and we stood around it. All four of us just kind of stood in a circle around it. We put the doll right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle. And this was an enclosed area, so there wasn't any wind. There wasn't anything going on with, like, weather or anything. It wasn't raining. And we're just talking. We're just, uh, we're totally just bullshitting about something stupid. I can't even remember. But all of a sudden, we all hear a noise off in the distance. So we each, we all looking at the noise. We stop looking at the doll. We all start looking at the noise. And then on the opposite side of where we're looking, we hear this, we hear and feel this whoosh. Mm, gross. And we're like, whoa. And then we're look, and then we look down at the doll and the doll is knocked over. Mm, gross. Out of the circle of powder. Oh, gross. The powder is all fucked up, and some of it's on our shoes. Oh, God. And right then and there, we were all like, oh, shit, something's happening. <laughs> oh, my God. And we stayed for a little bit longer. Nothing really happened else after that, so we decided to leave. Doc and M were down at the the, the, the first story dealing with their own shit that I don't even know of. They were. They just said they were feeling weird shit happen and seeing weird things and hearing weird things. Mm. So they were having their own experience while we were up upstairs, and that is Suicide Mill. Creepy as <laughs> fuck. And the other one that I want to tell you about on a later podcast is called The Bridge, and the only reason it's called that is because it takes the the story takes place on a bridge. <laughs> it's also in Darrington. It's it blows my mind to think about it today. And this was like back in 2011, 2012. God. Yeah. Uh, so creepy. Yeah. Like you have such creepy encounters. Like, Well, me and my friends all got super into it in high school. And then I just, I kept going for a while. Well, like, like even out of high school. Well, I just, mean, I guess I didn't get super into it, but like I and was it doesn't, into it. It doesn't scare me as bad as other people. I'm so fascinated by it that the fear kind of leaves me until it's like in the moment of, like it's right there. Yeah, until with you. until it you literally knocking a doll over in front of you. <laughs> Gross. But yeah, that, those are my stories. I, I hope you liked them. They're. Kind of creepy. I got creepier ones. Don't worry about it. Yeah, super, super <laughs> creepy. I'll tell you some of my weak ass stories one of these days because <laughs> they're weak as fuck. Because yeah, I don't, I don't have anything super, super creepy. I do think, I do have this feeling though that if you believe in this stuff, it happens more. <laughs> like if you have, if you have a any any little bit of belief in it all that there is another side to it or anything, it happens harder and faster, and it's a lot more fun. But I do like the opposite side of if you're a skeptic and it fucking happens, you get like, <laughs> yeah, and you can't well, explain it. I also kind of feel like that there's just certain people that are more drawn to spiritual activity than others. Like, like my mom, for example, she 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 sees shit everywhere. Yep. You, you know, she sees people who aren't there all the fucking time. Brutal. You know, she chased a fucking person into the bedroom at the house that I grew up in thinking it was my dad and as she's in the bedroom being like wait where the fuck did he go my dad comes in through the garage my <laughs> mom wasn't even in the house my mom just oh, no. sees people like that's her thing I shut that shit out because I, <laughs> I was way too afraid I was, of it I'm a scared cat well, I also fucked with a Ouija board in improper manners, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> um, but yeah, <sighs> so 
we really want you, your guys' encounters, your guys' creepy tales and stories. And it doesn't just have to be ghosts. It can be, you know, anything paranormal, unexplained, creepy as fuck that, you know, did you see a fucking shapeshifter? Did you run into a skinwalker? Because those yeah. are scary as God. fuck. Oh, boy. Yeah. So if you, if you guys want to send us your stories... Yeah. Do it up. Send it to us. You can send it to our email, which is another nightmare pod at gmail.com. All one word, another nightmare pod at gmail.com. You can also DM us on social media. You know, we have Twitter and Instagram. You can search for us there on another nightmare podcast. You can search for me on social media everywhere. I am oh fuck yeah. That's O F A K Y A. And yeah, just come find us. And we also have a Facebook. Oh, yeah. We've started a Facebook page <laughs> like, and a Facebook group. I was like, you forgot one, babe. <laughs> yeah. So you can check out um, our Facebook page and our Facebook group. Um, again, just search Another Nightmare Podcast and you'll find us there. And these are places where you can interact with us. You can give us ideas for future episodes. You can send us your personal creepy encounters and ghost stories and what have you. You can send us feedback on the episodes being like, hey, you suck at pronouncing everything. <laughs> but please be a little nicer we'll than it. that. I'm sensitive. But yeah, you know, we want to interact with you guys. We want to get to know you guys. We want to build a community, like I always say. You know, so, you know, look us up. Find us. Interact with us. We really want to hear from you guys. We want to hear your creepy stories. We want to hear your suggestions for episodes. Rob, I'm getting to yours. It just scares the shit out of me. So give me some time. <laughs> I can't wait either, buddy. I, I, it's, it's an episode I'm ready for. I'm creeped out. But <laughs> speaking of Rob. Rob, we just wanted to give you another big shout out, man. Thank you so much for the intro. It's, it's so good. It's We're awesome. so happy with it. And for all the people listening, I want to give you Rob's information because he has more stuff other than our intro. Yeah, he's <laughs> very musically talented. He, he's a great artist. Definitely. I, I love it. So Rob's Insta... Instagram. Instagram is insert nickname underscore. Um, that's insert nickname underscore. And I think that's a capital I. I on I'm in, not sure. On insert. So he has that. You can look him up there. You can see his see his stuff and check him out. He also has an album coming out soon. A Myriad of Mayhem. Love the name. Right. <laughs> and I think it's going to be great. I can't wait to listen to it myself. So please check out his Instagram. Look, uh, keep an eye out for that album, A Myriad of Mayhem. Yeah. And just, just check him out because it's he's an awesome guy and he makes really good sounds. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's really cool. And we really appreciate the um, intro that he did for us. It's super awesome. It's just the right amount of creepy. <laughs> he's probably going to be the guy that when... When we get to a certain amount of episodes, we'll probably have to change the intro. Probably going to go to him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys like this episode. I learned a lot about Friday the 13th. Yeah. Um, if you guys do enjoy the podcast, you know, be sure to leave us a rating and review, especially for those of you listening on um, iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever the fuck it's called these days. <laughs> but um, leave us a rating and a review because it helps other people find us. And it also gives us the opportunity to hear your feedback, hear your comments, um, you know, good or bad. I would prefer five stars, yep. you know, but, you know, <laughs> if you don't feel we deserve five stars, I totally understand. We can't make you. <laughs> yeah, we can't force it. But, you know, just leave us a rating or review. Come find us on social media. Interact with us. You know, we want to get to know you guys. And we really love doing this podcast for everybody. We really hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much for coming back. This is so awesome. We're six episodes in. We've almost made it over that hump of, like, yep. everybody quits after episodes. Like, if you don't make it to episode seven with your podcast, you're not going to make it at all, you know, type of deal. So we're almost there. Here we come, number seven. <laughs> it's gonna it's it's moving forward and we're really excited and happy and you know come check us out um the facebook page is also private so we can all kind of share creepy stories and weird memes and stuff like that you know just 
be sure to be respectful, but we can all share creepy stuff and then it won't interfere with your personal page. So if you have like friends and family that would harshly judge you for that type of stuff, don't worry because it's a safe space for us to be weird as fuck. Hell yeah. Because that's what this <laughs> podcast is about, being weird as fuck and liking creepy shit. <laughs> I, uh... I hope everyone has a good Friday the 13th. Yeah, enjoy your Friday the 13th. Now that you know a little bit more about it, you can be extra spooky. Yeah. And we'll see you all next week. See you then. Bye. Bye.